Welcome to The Verdict. Kent Myers uh, sitting in uh, without Mick Cornett this week. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. He's out doing some city business. We're glad you join us again today on The Verdict. We've got a very exciting show with a very exciting guest. Uh, much is said uh, across the community and across the state and sometimes across the nation about what a great uh, spirit of cooperation the city leadership in Oklahoma City has. Uh, and how they work well with the uh, uh, elected leaders, uh, both at the city level and at the state level. And we're going to talk about that a little bit and try to put some uh, meat on those bones to uh, talk about what kind of benefits have actually resulted to Oklahoma City and may result to Oklahoma City by that spirit of cooperation. We're going to have Judy Hatfield on with us in just a minute. But we're really glad you're here this Sunday. So uh, stick around. We're going to break for uh, some commercials right now. But come back. You're watching The Verdict. America had its own clean energy, abundant and available for the next century or more, and possibly indefinitely. A true 21st century energy source would cut carbon emissions in half and do every living thing a world of good. That clean American energy exists. It's natural gas, and Chesapeake is its number one explorer. For producing clean electricity, and fueling our cars without imported oil, natural gas saves money and the environment. Proving the answer to this country's energy needs is right under our feet, and we're not running out. Clean, abundant, affordable, American natural gas. Doing a world of good for our communities, our economy, and our irreplaceable planet Earth. Well, it's, it, whenever I grab a hold of it, it's... Well, you let me try to do it, because I'm... Oh. Um, you know, when you, some of the well, stuff he said... No, we're not going to do a video. I mean, okay. Just Discuss about it. Oh, some of the quotes. We did, yeah, we didn't want... It, when you actually put the video on, it takes so much more time than yeah. just putting the words up and reading them. And well, and that's what you want to hear anyway. You want What did he say? Yeah. And what did it mean? <clears throat> yeah. Were, our, were we okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We've got quotes especially for your show. Oh, good. I don't know what they are, so that's fine. Well, no, you don't. A little surprise. Besides, well, I'm, I'm all about done. talking to you. That's so. something we've done always is in between segments. That's a good we thing do to a do. Quote about the, Welcome back to Verdict. Uh, we're pleased again uh, today to have a return guest uh, talking to us about things uh, going on at the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. To my right is Judy Hatfield. Uh, Judy is a board member of the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. She did her undergraduate work at the University of Oklahoma. She is a CPA and a re commercial real estate broker. Uh, she is president and CEO of Equity Commercial Realty here in Oklahoma City and around the state. Uh, she's uh, been involved with many civic activities, received many civic honors, cultural and the like. She, uh, that includes service on the board of uh, Allied Arts and the National Memorial here in Oklahoma City. This is her second visit to the verdict. Uh, Judy, welcome back. Thank you so much. Glad really to have you. That. Glad to be here. Well, now, what are you doing? I heard you are doing something with, uh, with the library here in Oklahoma City, the Absolutely. old library. I am doing that, and I'm so passionate about it, you'll have to get the hook, because I'll spend all the time well, talking about let's it. let's take a look at the, speaking of the hook, let's okay. take a look at the, uh, at the brochure on 
Carnegie Center. There well, it is. And while, while that's online, I'll just go ahead and start to talk about yeah, go it. go ahead. Um, as most everyone knows, the new Ron Norick Library uh, was uh, opened about four years ago, and it was part of the MAPS program. But the old library actually had been there since the 1890s and was originally a Carnegie Library and was there for 50 years as this beautiful old Southern Charm Library. That was torn down when they needed more room in uh, about 1950. And the library that's, uh, old library that's there now was built in its place. And it sat uh, vacant for about four years while we tried to come up with what can we do with that? Because the city has owned it since before statehood. And where is it located? Uh, it's actually located on the northeast corner of Robinson and Dean A. McGee, which is 3rd yeah. Avenue. Yeah. And then I give all the points next to at and across from Sandridge, a catty corner from BOK, uh, right in the heart of downtown Oklahoma City. So I'm lucky enough to be the developer on that project uh, so that we can turn it into a mixed use, which will have 18 residential condo units nine office condo units, uh, about six or seven retail uh, condo units, and parking condos. Now, this show is airing in, the, in June. Uh, what's your timetable on when you think it's going to be completed and ready to, to do something? Well, we just finished asbestos abatement, so we're glad to say that that is now clean as a whistle. Uh, we're finishing up some uh, little financing changes that uh, the latest uh, things going on in the financial world have created opportunities for us as developers to uh, be just a little more sharp with our pins as we look at projects. Uh, we should start uh, demolition uh, in June so that it can be ready by the end of next summer is the plan. So summer of 2009? Of 2009, yes. Uh -huh. But yes. if they want to know more about it, they can contact you. Absolutely. And we're going to give them a website to that do that. That sounds great. The, I appreciate that. Okay, great. Well, let's uh, switch gears. Okay. a little bit and talk now about the Oklahoma City Chamber uh, and the projects that are going on. One thing I know that uh, you're particularly interested in is a riverfront project. What's happening there? Well, really everything that has to do with downtown Oklahoma City. We're so lucky that our city of Oklahoma City, and of course, although Mick's not here today, we can talk about him lovingly. Yeah, you can say anything uh, <laughs> about Mick today. Well, it'll be very positive, believe <laughs> me. Uh, he certainly has earned that and deserves it. Um, additionally, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, actually, the Oklahoma City Chamber, has been able to uh, work with the city under contract to really be their economic development arm. So they're involved in everything that uh, has to do with anything going on really in Oklahoma City, but right now downtown Oklahoma City is a, of particular interest. So they're working with us on the riverfront property, uh, and we, I say we, you know, like I'm a big part of that, but Mike Knopf has been phenomenal uh, in that regard. And Now he's the rowing coach at OCU. Yes. He's been on the show. Yes. Oh, good. And okay. I know that there's been a new uh, boathouse uh, either commissioned or opened. I'm Actually, not sure. even more than that. So everybody's kind of familiar with the Chesapeake Boathouse. Right. And then Devin's done uh, uh, some additional money to take care of the two new boats that are going to actually right. go along the river. Then as you move over uh, further east, the road is being redone there. There'll be a, a viewing tower that will be the first new building that will be there. Then immediately east of that will be the OCU, uh, I'm not sure if it's OCU Devon or Devon OCU because of their major contribution that they've made. And then just on the Regents uh, for OU on their last uh, board meeting last week or week before, uh, they are going to build an OU boathouse. So we already know that those are being uh, architecturally designed. Mike has a fantastic uh, uh, rendering of what it's going to look like. and you would not know you're in Oklahoma City. Well, as a lifelong native of Oklahoma City, this is uh, both exciting and, and startling. Uh, the viewing tower you mentioned, is that to view races? Is exactly. that what that's for? And I'm sure that there'll be other opportunities for that, but specifically, having just had the Olympic trials for kayaking and rowing, uh, you know, to have a really good inside viewing tower that regardless of weather, cold, hot, rainy, whatever, and of course, in Oklahoma, we have over 300 days of sunshine. That would be uh, it would be a chamber comment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a real important thing for us to, we'll to have let to people put know. Up a slate on that. <laughs> <laughs> be happy to do that. But that's kind of what's going on with the riverfront. And of course, that's going to stimulate other uh, private investors to come in and do other wonderful things along the riverfront. There's a phrase I've seen that I have only the most general understanding about that I want you to kind of expand on if you okay. if you can. I've, I've mixed talked about core to shore. 
Oh, yes. What, what is Core mean downtown Oklahoma City? Core means downtown Oklahoma City. And, and shore means shore of the river. Shore of the river. So it's, he's talking about what happens in between? Exactly. Well, tell us about that. Okay, that's, uh, there's been a, a group that's been working on that now really for a couple of years. And what's cool about the shore part of it is we think of going to the shore being the north side, but if you're going to be on the shore, you need the south side to look gorgeous too because you're going to see both sides as you're down there. So what that really opens up for us is over 600 acres uh, of new development from, since I-40 is going to be relocated seven uh, blocks south, that's going to open up all of that for now, redevelopment. Now, I-40 is going to be located south of the river or north uh, of the It's going to be river? north of the river, but it's going to be south of uh, downtown Oklahoma City. Okay. So actually, I'll have to think about that because that's going to be south of the river as I rethink through exactly where that's going to be. I start thinking about all the buildings and where we're going to redo possibly the convention center and that. But the broad, the new Broadway, which will be uh, where the, where the uh, I-40 is now, that will actually become this wonderful uh, street level uh, opportunity for us to, to redevelop there. And the city has just bought the old post office uh, and so that that can be raised now and new development goes on there. So you can go to the city of Oklahoma City's website and actually pull down the renderings that show what's going on with Quarter Shore. That's exciting. We got to jump in here and yep. get us to a break. Uh, we're visiting with Judy Hatfield, uh, representing the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. You're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. Home values are down in some states, but not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's home values have increased 4.2% during the past 12 months. Unlike some states where home values have decreased as much as 20%. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. There may be real estate problems in some states, but there has never been a better time than now to buy or sell a home in Oklahoma. One of the most affordable states in the country, Oklahomans are buying and selling homes every day. And an Oklahoma Realtor can show you how. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Back to the verdict, Kent Myers visiting with Judy Hatfield, uh, representing the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Judy, uh, we were talking about uh, downtown Oklahoma City and, uh, and the work the Chamber is doing there. Uh, obviously a lot going on. Uh, tell us about living downtown. That's something that is uh, uh, a relatively new development here in Oklahoma City. Yes, it is, and uh, having lived in downtown Oklahoma City for two years. You actually live in downtown? I, I, I'm not at this moment because working on the Carnegie Center, I'll be living there as soon as I uh, get that one up and running. So. But you used to live downtown? I, I did. Okay. lived in the Montgomery for a year and a half and actually lived in the Colcord Hotel for six months. I'm also a part owner in that, but um, I love downtown Oklahoma City, and until you've really uh, felt the synergy and the excitement of what's going on downtown from actually living there. It's really hard to understand. Since I knew I was going to be doing a lot of development in downtown Oklahoma City, I felt like how better to know what really works than to actually live and be right in the middle of it. And For example, if I did a, a walk in downtown Oklahoma City to kind of tell you what goes on, um, 
people worry about, well, what's there, and what are you going to do about a grocery store, and what about retail? I was going to ask you that. Yeah, the grocery <laughs> store question. Well, um, my opinion, and uh, let me say that this is not everyone's opinion, but having lived downtown, one of the things I recognize about the grocery store, and then I'll move on to other things, is that I still bought my groceries wherever I bought my groceries. And I brought them in, parked my car, took them inside. Uh, I actually had an apartment at the time. so. That wasn't a big issue for me because when I loaded down on groceries, I wasn't on my bike getting a, a, a bottle of wine and a baguette and some new roses, you know, for the <laughs> for the uh, uh, inside of my unit. But uh, downtown Oklahoma City has uh, Bricktown. We think of that all the time, but now mm -hmm. as you get into the real downtown uh, area, that's the core actually of the downtown uh, employment base. You know, we have uh, two cleaners. We have. Red Prime Steak now. We have lots of places to eat. We have the Memorial, which is, you know, our number one tourist attraction. We have, uh, from living most recently at the Colcord, I could go one block to my trainer. I could go one block to have a massage. I could go over three blocks to go to the Harkins Theater and be home by nine. I never worried about security. Uh, that it's so safe in downtown. So Oklahoma you just City. basically walk around. Oh, I, you walk everywhere. You don't yeah. need a car. And now with with oil prices going up, thank you, Lord, but with gasoline prices going up, uh, that's making people rethink about what, what they do with cars. How many people would you estimate we have living downtown uh, in, in Oklahoma City now? Uh, probably about 1,000 to 1,500. And, and 10 years uh, ago, that wasn't uh, the case at uh, all, was uh, it? Much, uh, almost nil, yeah. uh, actually. Yeah. Uh, but a downtown uh, living study was actually commissioned by the city of Oklahoma City and the chamber. Here's where they work together again. And that indicated that we have demand for 5,000, and then within five years, demand for 10,000 people living in downtown Oklahoma City. Wow. And if you look at other cities' best practices, where uh, we've recently been to Nashville and Indianapolis and Denver, you really see that. I was just in Fort Worth this weekend where my grandson lives. And I mean, Fort Worth is amazing with the downtown energy that's been created by the living component. Well. Uh, you talked just a minute about best practices, and I know that that is a term of art uh, in the chamber work. When you and the chamber leaders go to other cities uh, under the best practices uh, banner, what are you doing? Uh, we squeeze in, you know, about a week's worth of activities into about a day and a half. And once again, because of the mayor and the city's ability to get with the mayor of that city, then we're able to uh, take, usually it's 85 to 90 of the top leaders in Oklahoma City fly out, we listen to the things they've done right, and maybe some of the things that didn't go so right, so that we can take those and uh, do what's best for Oklahoma City from those. I know uh, Mick has talked to me about, maybe on the show, I, I lose track of what's on camera and what isn't, but uh, he's talked to me a lot about being in Indianapolis a number of times. I yes. suppose you've done that there Certainly and other have. places. Certainly have. That, that was a great trip. Um, let me ask you about uh, uh, the, uh, your view about how well uh, the city of Oklahoma City elected leaders work with the chamber. I, I can't give enough accolades uh, to all of them from the city council, well all the way from Mick down, but the city council people are all passionate about making sure that Oklahoma City is the best place to live. and. You know, some of the newest things that have just come along is Forbes just named us, as you know, as the number one most recession-proof city yeah. and uh, number one in housing costs and I think seventh in uh, the pollution kinds of things so that we're a very clean city. And I could go on and on and on about those kinds of things. Those have happened because the city leaders have worked with the business leaders. And to go on with that, the NBA, look at that. Well, the NBA, uh, uh, Tom Ward and Sandridge moving uh, his whole operation to downtown yeah, Oklahoma City. The old Kermagee building and the renovation the he's building. doing. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. And they're approachable. You know, our city business leaders, although they're huge corporate people, well, Larry Nichols, for example, has yeah. just been chairman of the Oklahoma City Chamber for two years. We just did our retreat. He was on the bus all the way to Bartlesville, through the whole retreat, on the bus back. He had a zillion things going on with Devin, but he chose to spend the time uh, assisting city leaders do the right thing. Well, just to kind of as a, an aside, and I'm not supposed to do this, I'm not supposed to render opinions, but the one thing that's always impressed me, uh, uh, not being a city leader, is how approachable the city leaders are and oh, how yeah. down to earth and, and nice, just genuine human beings they are. 
They can't. They, they are not pompous or arrogant or mm -hmm. uh, anything of the like. Not at all. Well, <clears throat> let's talk about something that uh, you have referred to uh, in some material you gave me as the ICSC. ICSC. That stands for the International Council of Shopping Centers. It's actually going on right now uh, in New. Yes, the word is out <laughs> in New Orleans. In uh, I said New Orleans in uh, Las Vegas. Yes, folks, I don't know why I had that on my mind. Cornet is really in in Las Vegas now. Yep. The, the uh, secrets out. They do have them all over the United States, and one recently. But he's there at the ICS. He's there, which is the largest gathering of brokers, retailers, uh, developers, and then all the. Uh, accessory folks that go with that uh, in the United States. That's where the big one is. Uh, and Mick is so zeroed in on wanting to get retail in downtown Oklahoma City. Uh, I think he's actually a panelist on one of the uh, big panels this year so that he can talk about Oklahoma City is here with open arms. What can we do to get you retailers to come to downtown Oklahoma City? Because he knows that that's an important ingredient in the whole uh, connection of uh, urban living. We. Uh we just have a minute left. Uh, put your uh, prognosticator hat on and tell us what you think Oklahoma City is going to look like uh, 10, 15 years from now. How, how will it change? Well, I love the vision and um, as I close my eyes and I think about it from a bird's eye view, we'll have the iconic Devon Tower, yep. a million square feet of office uh, right across from the Myriad Gardens and right next door to the Colcord. Uh, and we'll see many other uh, iconic buildings, although they may not be of that magnitude. Uh, we'll see clean, we'll see a huge green park, which will be a place where people can gather. Uh, we'll see development all along the river, which will include housing. Um, whether or not we move our convention center or not is still left to be seen, or build a second one. I don't know the answer to that, but... We'll have 10,000 people living downtown. Yeah, it, it will be amazing, and we'll have to make sure that traffic's not an issue. Yeah, well, that's yeah. always a problem. <laughs> Judy, we have to interrupt Thank and you. close it out because we're out of time. Thanks to Judy Hatfield, representing the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. You're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. Thank you. comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Welcome back. Uh, Kent Myers uh, finishing up this uh, verdict show for this week. Uh, thanks to Judy Hatfield, the Oklahoma City uh, Chamber of Commerce, coming and telling us about what's going on in downtown Oklahoma City and elsewhere here in the area. And by the way, since we're talking about Judy Hatfield and her development at the uh, library, you may want to go to her website, <clears throat> which is www.equityrealty.net. You can find out about all <clears throat> excuse me, that she has going on. 
Also, we of course want you to go to our website, theverdict.tv. Let us know what kind of show you'd like to see. We really do look at that and we really do take your suggestions seriously. So if you've got something on your mind, let us hear from you. Uh, on behalf of Mick Cornett, we thank you every week for uh, joining us. And uh, I want to tell you that next week we're going to have a very, very interesting show with uh, the Reverend Mike Anderson. Dr. Anderson's going to talk about pulpit and the conscience. In other words, what kind of remarks are appropriate or inappropriate uh, from the uh, pulpit in the church. To, uh, it's not a political show, but it's going to be talking about some of the Jeremiah Wright uh, uh, quotes that you've heard about. Thanks for joining us uh, today. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.